नमस्कार टू ऑल द एम ए पी वाई स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी बैच टूडे फॉर दी नेक्स्ट फोर्टी मिनट्स एंड वर्क is one of the well known philosophers and theologians of modern india so we continue with the series on modern indian philosophy and today we are going in, in barcelona in spain to the parents who came from diverse backgrounds raymond panikar became a reputed figure in the field of theology philosophy and social thinking his father was an indian hindu and her mother was a catalan catholic uh, who is a catalan a spanish you know one of the major provinces of spain is known as catalonia so she was a, a spanish catholic panikar was ordained a catholic priest in 1946 later he undertook studies in indian philosophy and religion for the next 50 years panikar pursued his academic career as a professor in european indian and north american universities some of his works include the famous books published by him uh, written and published by him are as follows the unknown christ of hinduism the myth faith and hermeneutics the intra religious dialogue and cosmo theendric experience basic standpoint now what was the essence essentials of panikar's thinking raymond de panikar still remains a reputed figure in the field of inter religious dialogue so his primary concern is that of culture religion and the relationship between the two religion philosophy and culture are three elements of the human reality if the first could be compared to the fit with which man journeys towards his destiny philosophy could represent the eyes that scrutinize that journey and culture the earth on which human being is walking during his or her concrete pilgrimage an intellectual approach shows that one cannot separate philosophy from religion and that both are dependent on culture which nurtures them now let us uh, come to panikar's philosophy culture and interculturality this is what the first time uh, you are listening to a new uh, phrase called interculturality which means the common traits between different cultures between different philosophies between different uh, the distinctions as well as commonalities between different uh, world religions culture philosophy could be understood as the activity by which human being participates consciously and in more or less critical manner and in the discovery of reality and orients himself or herself within the latter the concept has thus become the unique instrument of philosophy each culture offers to philosophy the language that is essential for the philosophy to formulate its insights thinking and transforming in other words each philosophy emerges from the womb of a culture and simultaneously by questioning what holds that culture together can transform it in fact every deep cultural change has emerged from collectivity it is philosophers who influence most of the destinies of history very very interesting sentence it is philosophers who influence the most of the destinies of history so it is the thinkers which and who influence the making of history now let us look at what we understand by interculturality interculture imperative of our times 
monoculturalism is nothing. We can't impose a hegemonic culture that you have to follow only one culture. It is letha, means it is bad. And multiculturalism is equally impossible. Interculturality recognizes both assertions and seeks a middle way. Interculturality is inherent to human being and a unique culture is as incomprehensible and impossible as a single universal language and as one man alone. Interculturality is a possibility situated between two or more cultures. We cannot claim to define through one single word what interculturality, what intercultural philosophy, right? Uh, means, nor even presuppose that such a philosophy exists. East culture is a galaxy which self-understanding and with it, the criteria of truth, goodness, and beauty of all human actions. There are no cultural universals, but there are for sure human invariants. But the way according to which each one of the human invariants is lived and experienced in each culture is distinct and distinctive in each case. Cultural respect requires that we respect those ways of life which we disapprove or even those that we consider as pernicious. So please read this paragraph on interculturality when you visit our Panikas unit in Egankosh. Multi-faith dialogue and dialogical dialogue. Very interesting. For Panikar, multi-faith multi -faith between the world religions, multi-faith dialogue is both a highly political and highly urgent activity directed towards creating new forms of human consciousness and corresponding new forms of religiousness. It involves the crossing over of traditions in a manner that does not abandon one's primal tradition, but depends and extends it. Something new is created at the level of human and religious consciousness. Panikar's primary principle for religious encounter is that it must be a truly religious experience. According to him, it is more an exchange of religious experiences than of doctrines. The dialogue route is existential, intimate, and concrete. Its purpose is not to establish some universal religion. But the philosopher, it is in order that human relations remain personal. One cannot have human contact with a computer. A machine is not a person. Genuineans, therefore, ought to die. Between any, where we are never sure where one color begins and another ends, it must be free from particular and general apologies. Those involved in interfaith dialogue should not see their task in terms of defending religion in general against the non-religious or unreligious attitudes of secular society. Religious encounter is a meeting of persons, not simply the meeting of minds. It is not only a theological symposium, but a religious encounter in faith, hope, and love. Now let's come to dialogical Dialogue. What did Professor Panther mean by dialogical dialogue? Dialogical dialogue begins with the assumption that the other is also an original source of human understanding and that at some level, persons who enter dialogue have a capacity to communicate their unique experiences and understandings to each other. There are certain indispensable prerequisites for dialogical dialogue. These include a deep human honesty, intellectual openness, and the willingness to forego prejudice in the search of truth while maintaining profound loyalty towards one's own tradition. Second, one needs a deep commitment and desire to understand another tradition. 
both partners are encouraged to cross over to the other tradition and then cross back again to their own one learns to think and understand on the basis of symbol systems of more than one tradition symbols are both bounded and open their interpretation is never exhausted and yet they are concrete always tied to a particular world view now let's come to the interconnectedness the divine human and nature the individual separate from the others or from the earth or the divine does not exist what does it say the individual who is separate from the others or he someone who is separate different from earth or divine does not exist so there is a interconnectivity of a human being with the earth with nature and the god and the divine right we belong both to earth and to the divine by our very nature we are conscious and free parts of a whole not as puppets that can be easily directed by threads but rather we find ourselves within a cosmic interweaving or network the human being is a person not an individual I understand a person as a knot in a net of relationships. These threads connect us with our fellow men, the earth and divinity. The more conscious the person is, the more he or she realizes that he is or her person reaches out to the confines of the world. That is, the enlightened man or woman. now let's come to another concept of his cosmotheendric vision what is cosmotheendric vision anikar develops his cosmotheendric vision of reality anikar develops his cosmotheendric vision of reality with reference to three major religious traditions the christian trinity the vedanta hindu advaita the buddhist pratitya samutpad that is that when we did buddhism quite some time ago pratitya samutpad it is causation coming effect is coming out of a cause he believes that the three fold pattern traditionally are theos anthropos cosmos theos anthropos and cosmos are invariants of all religions and cultures now what is a theos that is to do with the theology religion divinity anthropos human centric and cosmos that is to do with the cosmology the space the the heavenly bodies are invariants of all religions and cultures he describes the cosmo theendric principle as an intuition of the threefold structure of all reality the triadic oneness existing on all levels of consciousness and reality in christian terms ultimate reality the trinity is one but also three in hindu terms the ultimate unity of all things is literally neither one advait not to advaita in buddhist terms everything is radically related to everything else related right so effect coming out of cause pratitya samutpad let us repeat uh, in the christian terms ultimate reality the trinity is one but also three in hindu terms the ultimate unity of all things is literally neither one advait not to advait not advait nor advait it is neither one or two this is vedantic advaita philosophy very very mind boggling mind boggling and interesting and in the buddhist terms everything is radically related to everything else pratitya samutpad 
the cosmothenric principle could be stated by saying that the divine the human and the earthly are the three irreducible dimensions which constitute the real everything that exists any real being presents this constitution expressed in three dimensions panikas formulation of reality as cosmothenric challenges the assumption that reality is reducible to being there is also non being the abyss silence and mystery we cannot identify even the consciousness with reality because there is also matter and spirit panikar conceives that reality is not mind alone or chit or consciousness sat chit ananda as uh, uh, we say in hinduism or spirit reality is also sat and ananda sat chit ananda also matter and freedom joy and being in fact this is for panikar the fundamental religious experience being a reality transcends thinking as cosmothenric vision reveals three assumptions regarding reality Firstly reality is ultimately harmonious second reality is radically relational and interdependent in such a way that every reality is constitutively connected to all realities thirdly reality is symbolic we do not have a god separate from the world a world that is purely material we do not have a god separate from the world a world that is purely material not humans that are reducible to their own thought processes or cultural expressions now let us look at the concept of theos the divine dimension of reality as i said theos means to when we say to do a theology it has to do with the divinity the concept of god idea of god the divine dimension of reality is not an object of human knowledge but the depth dimension to everything that is panikar does not want to confine the divine mystery into mere god talk he identifies divine mystery using non theistic terms as infinitude freedom and nothingness The mystery of the divine is the mystery of the inherent inexhaustibility of all things at once infinitely transcendent utterly immanent totally irreducible and absolutely ineffable concept of anthropos consciousness is the human dimension of reality which is not reducible to humanity consciousness permeates every being everything that is is consciousness in other words consciousness relates not only to humans who know but to everything else that is actually or potentially known from the other perspective if consciousness relates to everything the human person can never be reduced to consciousness the panikar presents human experience as a threefold realistic aesthetic intellectual and mystical so uh, these are the characteristics of the human being concept of anthropos as i said human centric uh, human is has aesthetic qualities he or she has intellectual qualities and equally mystical qualities he critiques technocratic culture for reducing human life to two levels namely sensible and the rational forgetting the mystical aspect Panikar's intention is to show that genuine human experience involves the harmony of senses, intellectual and mystical awareness in correlation with matter, thought and freedom. Thought and mystical awareness are not possible without matter, indeed without the body. All our thoughts, words, states of consciousness and the like are also material or have a material basis concept of cosmos the world of matter now let us come to concept of cosmos so as i said it is more to do with 
the heavenly body this space space is just one in the in the world of cosmos the world of matter energy space and time is our home so that is cosmos the entire your surroundings environment world space everything these realities are ultimate and irreducible cosmic in its foundations expressions and effects the earth is sacred for example he insists that there is something more than pure materiality in a simple stone through its existence in space and time the stone is connected to the entire universe with which it shares its destiny in panikar's terms there are no disembodied souls or disincarnated gods in panikar's thinking there are no disembodied souls or disincarnated gods just as there is no matter no energy no spatio temporal world without divine and conscious dimensions great every concrete reality is cosmotheendric a symbol of the whole it is not only god who reveals the earth has its own revelations matter space time and energy are then coextensive with both human consciousness and divine mystery now let's come to the concept of human being in the philosophy of raymond du panikar or panikar he places human person in the context of culture as his main concern was that of interculturalism for him man or woman is is a cultural animal he also believes that culture is not extrinsic to him or her but natural he further explains that human is a being that is naturally cultural or culturally natural culture is the field that makes it possible for us to cultivate the world that it itself presents to us so that a man or a woman uh, may become fully human and achieve his fullness culture is the specific form of human nature the nature of man or woman is cultural culture is neither artificial nor additive to man or woman the ultimate criteria for condemning another culture will therefore consist in showing that it is anti natural now let's look at concept of truth according to panikar truth does not allow itself to be conceptualized it is never purely objective or absolute to talk about absolute truth is really a contradiction in terms the pretension of the great religions to possess all truth can only be understood in a limited and contingent context not to be conscious of our myths leads to integralism but in order to be aware of our myths we need our neighbor and therefore dialogue and love the truth is first of all a reality that permits us to live an existential truth that makes us free he says that he is not such a relativist as to believe that the truth is cut up in slices like a cake but he expresses his conviction that everyone participates in the truth and the value of dialogue between the various religion especially and precisely to help a human being to perceive that there are other windows other perspectives therefore i we need the other in order to know and verify our own perspectives of the truth truth is a genuine and authentic participation in the dynamism of reality he makes it clear that the dialogue between religions is not a strategy for making one truth triumphant but a process of looking for it and deepening it along with others now let's come to his understanding of the religion religion is the path that leads one to the state of fulfillment or salvation 
Salvation, understood here in the broadest sense, is anything making one whole, healthy, free, and complete. It could also be understood by different people as heaven, nirvana, nothingness, just society, etc. All kind of related concepts. Thus, a religion is that set of practice and or doctrines which one believes will uh, lead one to the liberation or fulfillment of one's being. These practices and doctrines are specially temporarily and culturally conditioned. Within each religion, one can distinguish three aspects, the socio-historical expressions in and through which a religion is alive. Secondly, the sacramental or sacred structures that mediate the relationship to the transcendent, to the God. And finally, the transcendent divine reality, the mystery, the goal of all religions. At the social historical level, religions are equivalent to each other. At the sacramental level, they complement and supplement each other. And the level of the mystery, which is neither one nor many, and which is called by many names and is experienced in many ways, religions bear witness to the infinite richness of the mystery and the impossibility of any one religion to exhaust it. For him, religions are like different colors of a rainbow. There are several colors and no color has a monopoly over the others. So we have completed uh, our Panikas, renowned philosopher, our Panikas philosophy, his understanding of human beings, religion, nature, cosmos. Now let us sum up. Focus on Panikas experience of Christian Hindu, Christian Buddhist, and Christian secularist dialogue. We have focused on this, Christian Hindu, Christian Buddhist, and Christian secularist dialogue. We have outlined his rules of the game for interreligious dialogue and intercultural encounter. Attention has been drawn to his distinct levels of religious discourse identified as mythos, logos, and symbol, anthropos, cosmos, and theos. Panikas' more adventurous proposal for the meeting of the world's religious and cultural traditions have been introduced through elucidation of his cosmothenric vision of reality. What he now calls the radical trinity of cosmic matter, human consciousness, and divine freedom. So what is this radical trinity? What is this concept? It consists of the cosmic matter, secondly, human consciousness, and divine freedom. The conversation has been concluded with an overall assessment of philosopher Panikas contribution to contemporary thinking on multi-faith dialogue and religious pluralism. Thank you for your patient hearing. Uh, this is, a, if you ask me, a slightly difficult level of philosophy to understand. So you need to read through Panikar, the unit on Raimandu Panikar more than once and answer your check your progress questions. Thank you so much. All the best.